Hope everyone is doing alright in these troubled times. Um, as you may know, me and my colleagues are laid off from work for now. Um, I'm not going to be talking too much about the corona situation and whatnot, but uh, anyway, we don't have any guests and we haven't had for a couple weeks. So a couple days ago I weighed my way up to Havisun from Lofoten. So I'm going to be staying up here in Havisun now until the situation changes and we know what's happening uh, for this season. But anyhow, uh, I didn't feel like making any more videos after the situation got kind of bad up here. Basically, I haven't been out fishing too much and the last weeks nothing actually because it has been really, really bad weather as well. I um, just want to point out that we have no customers on our camps, but both me and my colleagues are laid off from work and don't have any guests just so no one gets the wrong idea about we still having customers or whatnot. So uh, the situation up here is basically that everything is pretty much closed. This is anyway why I haven't put out any videos, but uh, I'm gonna try now to make some videos, uh, start off with some rigging tips for you. And as soon as the weather gets a little bit better, I'm gonna try to get a boat in the water and do some fishing for you and just make some videos anyway, just to keep myself busy and you to watch something. Okay, so first of all, I'm gonna show you how I fish when I use uh, bait fish for halibut. Uh, as you may know, it's forbidden to use live bait in Norway, so we either, either use uh, dead bait or make the dead bait into a flapper, which basically means that you cut out the spine from the fish, yeah, if that makes any sense. So you basically just have a head with two fillets uh, just dangling in the water, which makes uh, really good movements. The flapper will make uh, really nice swimming movement in the water, which is really good. And while the bait, the dead bait will uh, more be like a saddle, not really a presentation that moves too much. It depends a little bit about drifts and stuff. If you are drifting with the current and no wind, which means that the boat is moving the same speed as the water, uh, the bait will, uh, will be very still in the water, not move too much. But if you're drifting with the wind, the boat is moving faster than the water, which means the bait fish will do as well. And then if you have a dead bait, it will start turning and stuff, so you can play around a little bit with that, how you rig up your bait um, to, to get different turns uh, on the bait fish. What I recommend and what we use when we fish with a dead bait is, first of all, uh, you're gonna have Lead. You should have one that is pretty stable in the water. There's different kinds. Um, I'm using this 500 gram uh, piece of lead basically. And it's heavier in the bottom, which means it's gonna hang like this in the water. But I found out like sometimes uh, when I want a little bit more kick to my leader, I can shorten down the leader to the bait fish. And I put my lead with the heavy uh, end up, which means this part is going to move quite a lot in the current. And then it's going to make some movements on the bait fish. <coughs> That's just some uh, stuff you're going to have to play around with, with like whatever uh, weight you're using. That's the good part about having one of these that it's like not exactly the same on both sides. Then the length of the leader from the lead to the bait fish is a standard leader for me it should be 1.8 to 2 meters. That's kind of average, uh, but I'm changing the, the length quite a lot. Um, so if I want to be fishing more active with my bait fish and, uh, and using and uh, moving the bait fish a lot using the rod to make more movements on my dead bait, I shorten down the leader a little bit. Some people they use uh, one single hook and a treble hook in the back of the bait um, and when you do that you shouldn't really use too long leaders because uh, if your leader from the weight to the bait fish is longer than your leader from your main line down to your weight and you have treble hook and all that stuff in your bait fish when you drop down what a lot of times will happen is that the bait fish will get tangled in your main line and damage it when you're using one circle hook like we do, you can rig it like through the nostrils of the bait fish or through the upper yaw or whatever. Um, basically the sizes I use is a size 10 and a size 12 
Uh, I tend to go with the 12 a lot of times because I don't really care too much about the small fish, especially when I'm using uh, bait fish. Uh, but what you have to think about if you come up and fish for the first time and you want to land like all the halibuts uh, that is biting your bait, then it could be better to use the size 10. Don't really go too crazy on the size of the bait fish. Um, but use the size 10 because it's like it's a little bit smaller gap on the size 10. And the gap is between the point here and the shaft. And uh, when you have the 12 and you have this wider gap, what's, what happens is that on smaller fish it's easier for the hook to, to get stuck on a weird spot in the mouth. Uh, while you want to have it, you want to have it in the corner of the mouth. Um, so with a size 10. It's a little bit easier uh, for the hook to to slide in on in the corner of the mouth, basically. So my real tip is just how to tie the circle hook to the leader to have the best percentage of hookups. The point of using a circle hook is that the fish will pretty much hook itself on the hook. And by doing this specific knot on your hook, you're gonna have a more natural way for the hook to bend into the corner of the mouth so a lot of people they are using a loop knot to the circle hook and it works but for me i don't want to have my hook just uh, dangling randomly like this i want to have it like stuck in a fixed position so basically i'm gonna just show you how i like to tie my circle hook to my leader you go through the eye like this have like a good amount of leader to work with and then you just make a loop on the other side of the hook like this And then I go through here five, six times around the shank and in through the loop. One. And the important part is to get the, the turns to be close to each other and not overlapping. So now it's gonna look like this. All right, so then you just put some moisture on the knot Tie it down good. Trim the edge. Then it's gonna look something like this. You wanna trim this edge down as much as you can. What this does is that when the halibut takes your bait, swallows it down. When you tighten up to hook the fish, then it's gonna have a more natural way of getting uh, in the right position in the corner of the mouth by the leader going like this in a fixed position all the time no matter like how the fish is turning from you so this is what how i like to use it in a way and it has been working really good for me okay so when it comes to jigging i have two major things that is for me really important to think about uh, this is basically just really really simple tips that is like the most important part to have a successful fishing when you're jigging and I'm using a stinger hook on my jigs all the time on halibut fishing and that's basically because it can be really finicky sometimes and just bite the tails and uh, you're gonna have periods of the day when they crank down on your bait really hard and then when the current slows down maybe and uh, the fishing gets a little bit uh, tougher uh, they will be really finicky and just uh, enable the tail uh, but basically I always use single hooks as stinger hooks. A single hook is everything you need. It's better for the fish and better for you as well dealing with the fish. You never want to have too much hook points dealing with halibut because sometimes it just thrash around so much and you can get hurt really easy. But the tips is number one the length of the stinger hook should not be too long so it doesn't mess with the with the movement obviously. Number two like some people they make it too long and then they just put on the hook where they want it and then they have a lot of loose material like this what happens is like when the fish takes and you set your hook you don't get that tension that you need to set the hook properly so you want to make it so that you have you see there is tension immediately and that's really important to get the good hook up you can tie it with the mono fluorocarbon like this or you can buy hooks that is having the assist cord material like this so if you maybe use a jig like this with the paddle tail and you put the hook like into the paddle if you're using a treble hook uh, what happens is when the fish is just nibbling in the tail not really taking the bait you will hook the fish really really far out in the lip and when you're gonna put pressure on that fish you will just pop the hook so 
There is no need to have the hook like really far back because you really want the fish to take the bait like quite good before you set the hook. So if you just feel a nibble, that's not really the time when you want to set the hook because then when you start fighting you're gonna lose it anyway. But still, the stinger hook is saving a lot of fish for you so if you want to catch a lot of fish and have a good percentage not losing too much fish then you should definitely use a stinger hook but think about those small tips. Don't have the hook too far back and have good tension on the material to your stinger hook. Okay, so that was just a couple of quick tips to get you ready for your next adventure out on the sea and to help you have a better hooking percentage on the halibuts when you're up here in Norway. Hope everyone is just taking care of each other and uh, your families and stay safe and uh, I see you in the next one.